On the eve of Thanksgiving, I am going to bring up once again that universal emotion that we all feel during this time of the year. Suffering. This is Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all the Major League Baseball. I'm yours, Paul Francis Sullivan, as my lower third right there tells you. You can call me Sully. Thank you so much for making Locked On MLB your first listen, as we're available for free in all your podcasting catchers. We are your team every day here at Locked On, and check out all the shows, whether it's the offseason or not, for baseball and for NFL, NHL, NBA, all sorts of sports, anything you follow, we got it here at Locked On MLB. Hey, this show is being dropped on the 24th day of November 2021, and we are on Twitter at Locked On MLB Pod, same handle for Instagram, as you can see right there. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at Sully Baseball, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. I do respond, I do write back. And follow us on YouTube and all the places you get your podcasts. Hey, um, uh, a few weeks ago, I did the Suffering Index. I re uh, recalculated the Suffering Index, which was, I'm going to look up the exact date. I probably should have done this beforehand, but what are you going to do? Sometimes you, sometimes you got to do your homework on the bus. But what the Suffering Index was, for those of you who are new to the podcast, is I created a formula that was designed to try to figure out which fan base has been suffering the most. And likewise, you know, and, and, and because of that, which ones really deserve a championship and of which a championship would mean the most to them, I guess is what I'm saying. And a lot of this came about from the, okay, that's I did on November 13th. So 11 days ago. And the Suffering Index was designed after the Cubs won the World Series in 2016 to try to figure out which fan base has been suffering the most, deserves a championship the most, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I came up with this formula uh, after the 2016 World Series. And that was for, to, in review, it was you take the number of years since the teams won the World Series and you add to that the number of years since the teams won a pennant divided that by four number of years since the previous world series title divide that by eight number of years since the last postseason appearance divide that by 16 and you add in the number of one game playoff or deciding games lost and you divide you multiply that by 10 and then you subtract the number of one game playoffs or deciding games one and that's your suffering index. I try to take into account, you know, missing the playoffs, frequent World Series championships and everything like that. I, I would just, and the frustration that I know I felt over the years when my team is on the verge of clinching something and they don't do it. And I knew there were some flaws. And right away I could tell, I mean, over the years I could tell there were flaws in the formula uh, because there were some teams that, clearly should be considered elite teams that were super high up on the suffering index. And there were some teams that were, you know, floundering franchises that were super low. For example, the Marlins always were very low on the suffering index, mainly because they hadn't lost many postseason series. In fact, they've only lost one postseason series in their entire history. And they didn't have a lot of game seven or deciding game losses over the years because they weren't in the playoffs and they won two world series in 97, 2003, all these things that artificially lowered their score. Meanwhile, the Yankees had a very high suffering index. And a big reason to that was the number of game sevens and game fives of division series and one game playoff wildcard games that they've lost over the years since the 2009 championship inflated their score. 
Well, I received, you know, I posted it and, you know, warts and all. And Cleveland had the highest suffering index, although I think Montreal fans actually should have the highest because they had all the suffering and the team taken away from them. But this is of the 30 current franchises. And the most suffering fan bases belong to number one, Cleveland, number two, Oakland, number three, Milwaukee, number four, Pittsburgh, number five, Texas, number six, the Reds, number seven, the Mets, number eight, the Orioles, nine, the Yankees, because of all those losses, and 10, San Diego. Oakland also has a ton of deciding game losses that inflated their score. And the teams with the lowest suffering index, Atlanta's the lowest, then Boston was the next one, Los Angeles Dodgers were the next, Kansas City were the fourth lowest, and the Washington Nationals were the fifth lowest, and then was San Francisco. And Kansas City and some of the teams were boosted by the fact that their last postseason appearance was a World Series championship, so they haven't had any Game 7 losses or anything since then. Well, more than one person pointed out some of the inherent flaws in my suffering index, and that is it's really, really weighted heavily on postseason frustration, getting to a playoff series and losing it, getting to that Game 7 and losing it not making it to the playoffs for a bunch of years, having long gaps between World Series championships. And perhaps that's part of my own personal bias. I was raised in New England, then we moved to the San Francisco Bay Area in time for the Giants and the A's to be very good. I moved to New York and saw the Yankees be very good for a long stretch of time. I'm now living in Los Angeles area where the Dodgers are always in the postseason. And so... I've always been surrounded by teams. Granted, the Red Sox didn't get into a lot of playoffs when I was younger, but I'm always surrounded by teams that are relatively successful, have winning records, and are playoff contenders year in and year out. And so I was thinking of suffering only, uh, you know, fan base suffering only from lacks of championships and losses in October and frustrations in the postseason. What I was not taking into account was irrelevancy, was a summer of no hope, a summer of no fun, losing records. I've seen all the teams I just mentioned, I've seen them all have losing records, but year in and year out getting a losing record. And also the 100 loss team, where you look and say, God, we're so bad. We're just so bad, which is a different kind of suffering than a ball just barely going over Nelson's Nelson Cruz's head in game six of the 2011 World Series. It's a different kind of suffering to know that your team is irrelevant and just stinks as opposed to they was in our grasp. And so I was very much biased towards the postseason suffering. So I needed to do a modification. I needed to make an amendment and to take a look at the suffering index and try to recalculate it, keeping in mind irrelevancy, keeping in mind rooting for a team and a suffering fan base who goes to the park and says, we're going to get walloped, aren't we? And a bunch of years where those will add up and create a suffering we're going, if only we were getting killed in October. If only we were getting punched in the face on national TV in the World Series. Instead, our season's over, and it's not yet Memorial Day. Our season's over. We're thinking about what veterans we're going to trade in spring training. And the slog of the season, yet another year where our team stinks. That's a whole category of suffering, which is probably more common And so I made the adjustments. And in the next segment, we're going to talk a little bit about the adjustments I made, and then we'll take a look at the results. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm recording this kind of late at night, and I need a boost of energy. And I'm going to take that boost of energy known as a, say it with me, Built Bar. That's right. I got my new Built Bars here. This one is, which one is this? This is the, ooh, the Caramel Almond Delight. I love caramel. I love almonds. 
and this is probably a real delight. This may turn out to be one of my new favorite flavors. There are so many great flavors. Orange, strawberry, mint, was it mint brownie, cookies and cream, double chocolate. What's this one again? The caramel almond delight. I mean, they're so good. These, all these flavors are so delicious, but they're not just good for you. Oh, by the way, raspberry is my favorite, but they're not just great tasting, but they're great for you too. Now, let's take a look at this one here. You've got, um, I mean, they're covered in 100% chocolate here, which is fantastic. But you've got, let me let me take a look at here. You have total protein. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got, these are low in cholesterol, low in carbs, low in sugar, uh, five grams of dietary fiber. And, I mean, you've got, I mean, you've got only 150 calories and it's loaded with protein and they're good for you and they give you that great boost of energy and you know what come thanksgiving time this could be a great thing to eat what is it 130 carbs four grams of sugar four, four net carbs and this is fantastic absolutely fantastic and you know what the great flavors like this are going to be coming all month limited time flavors are arriving at built.com regularly so check that site off i'm going to bite it i'm going to eat it on the air because that's bad podcasting but let me tell you, there's nothing like a Built Bar Friday. Mark your calendar. Black Friday will be a huge event with all sorts of surprises. Where do you go? You go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15. You get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. I'm going to go on a break. I may eat this Built Bar. Well, I'm not going to eat it right now because there's uh, we got calculations to do. So th- this is what I did to take into account losing seasons i am going to add those to the calculations i'm also taking into account 100 lost seasons that ultimate humiliation of oh my god we're an all-time bad team aren't we so i'm factoring in losing years and 100 lost seasons into the modified version of the suffering index and so by doing that, what I decided to do was I'm going to take all the, you know, the, the calculations as they are, the, the final tally numbers as they are, but I'm going to add the losing seasons and the 100 loss seasons. Now, each losing season, I'm going to multiply by two. So if you just have piled up losing seasons over the years, it's going to make your suffering index skyrocket. And 100 loss seasons, I'm going to multiply by three. And what I have found out is a sense of equity is happening in terms of the suffering index. Because what I'm now taking into account is the years where a team is losing year in and year out. Since last winning a World Series, the city of Cleveland, whether it be the Indians or the Guardians, have seen 37 losing seasons nearly four decades worth of sub 500 ball 37 losing seasons and four of those seasons were 100 lost seasons so that's gonna hurt and it's opened up a couple of things that are interesting in terms of some of the teams that were very low on the suffering index for example the kansas city royals the kansas city royals had a very very low suffering index because they won the World Series relatively recently in 2015, and they haven't played in the postseason since. So therefore, they haven't lost a Game Seven or a Game Five of the Division Series or one Game Wild Card playoff. So they are still kind of suffering-wise, are riding high off that championship they won against the New York Mets in 2015. But ah, their suffering index has been increased. Why? Because of two factors. Since winning that World Series, the Royals have had five losing seasons. And two of those seasons have been 100 loss years. So yes, they do have a recent World Series title, but they also have two 100 loss seasons recently. Now those are probably easier for Royals fans to swallow knowing their team had won the World Series just a few years ago, but still, You've seen them go from, that's a different kind of suffering, to see your team go from the apex, back-to-back pennants in 2014 and 2015, winning it all against the Mets in 2015, 
to a pair of hundred lost seasons and being awful. And so we need to factor that in. And the number, there's several teams that had long stretches of losing seasons. The Mariners have had 30 losing seasons and they've never won a World Series. How they've never won a pennant. So that's 30 losing seasons that have compounded over the years. The Rangers have had 28 losing seasons and three 100 loss seasons. The Mariners have had five 100 loss seasons since their creation. You know, Tampa Bay, who has been so consistent and everything like that, had a slew of losing seasons right out of the gate and a couple of, and three 100 loss seasons. The Orioles have had a, that long streak of futility where they had 24 losing seasons over the years, including 400 loss years. The Rangers, forget about it, 28 losing seasons over the years. The Milwaukee Brewers, I bet you forgot this. The Milwaukee Brewers went on a gigantic stretch where they couldn't put a winning product on the field. They've had 32 losing seasons over the years. The Mets, big budgeted Mets, have had 19 losing seasons. And along the way, the Pirates have had 31 losing seasons with 400 lost seasons. And the Padres, my God, not only have they not won a World Series, they've had 37 losing seasons and five, count them, five 100 lost seasons. And over the years, San Diego has seen five sub-400 teams. Of the 37 sub-500 teams in their history, 10 of them have been sub-400. So when you take those elements into account, you will see that we're now taking not just the frustration of October, but the frustration of futility. And I've added to each of those scores the formula that I just said, which was a losing season is worth two, a 100 loss season is worth three. And so I calculated them out. And we have a new version of the suffering index, which I think reflects better. And now, of course, people are going to have other modifications and we're going to tweak and tweak and tweak to make sure it's perfect. But it's a surefire bet that we've made some improvements to this and that it will reflect more on what makes a fan base suffering over the years. And if you're going to make any bets, go to Bet Online. It's the number one spot for all the sports action this Thanksgiving. Head to the new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with promo code locked on to receive your, po- your bonus. Not a bonus. It's not just baseball and football. They've got pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online. We're stuffed with deals this Thanksgiving. Okay, let's take a look at the results of the new suffering index and which teams have benefited the most and which teams have skyrocketed the most. Well, the team that's benefited the most are the Yankees, who they have not had a losing season or a 100 loss season since their last World Series title. And so while some of the teams on the suffering index have nearly doubled their score, the Yankees have stayed exactly the same. And they've gone, I mean, they have tumbled. Where, where were they before? The Yankees were the, um, I believe they were number 10. No, they were number nine. They were considered top 10 suffering of all of the franchises. And now they've fallen all the way down to 17, which makes sense that they're in the bottom half of suffering, but there has been some suffering over the years. They're not going to be, you know, the bottom 10. Meanwhile, teams like Seattle and San Diego have skyrocketed because of all the losing seasons. And so let's just review. As we said, the top uh, let me go right here. Uh, I said the the top five suffering teams with the old formula were the Indians, Guardians, A's, Brewers, Pittsburgh, Texas. As it is now with the amendments, it's 
Cleveland, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, Oakland, Texas. The same five teams in a slightly different order. Texas is still at five. Cleveland's still at one. Milwaukee jumped up from three to two. Pittsburgh jumped up from four to three. Oakland fell all the way down to four. Um, and the Yankees fell all the way to 13. The Padres and the Mariners skyrocketed to the uh, top uh, the top 10. And Miami, because of all those losing seasons in Miami and all those years where they, you know, their 100 loss season and everything like that, that Miami went from being the, went from 24 to 19. They jumped up. The, the only real, there's a couple of movement down towards the end. Kansas City jumped up a couple of spots. San Francisco fell down a few spots. Uh, the Dodgers and the Red Sox switched positions because the Red Sox did have that one losing season. The Dodgers won more recently than Boston. And of course, Atlanta remains as the least suffering fan base based upon the fact that they're defending World Series champs. So going from worst to the most suffering to the absolute, um, you know, the, the, the absolute most relaxed fan base, uh, number one, Cleveland, most suffer, still the most suffering. Number two, Milwaukee. Number three, Pittsburgh. Number four, Oakland. Number five, Texas. Number six, San Diego. Number seven, Seattle. Number eight, Baltimore. Number nine, Cincinnati. Number 10, the Mets. That's your 10 biggest suffering franchises in baseball. Then come the middle. Tigers at 11. Twins at 12. Tampa Bay at 13. Colorado at 14. The White Sox are all the way at 15. Then you go to the second half here, which includes Toronto at 16. The Yankees at 17. Still bulked up from all those deciding games lost. Arizona's at 18. Okay, that's still a little quirk in the system, but what are you going to do? Miami is at 19. Okay, that's jumped up five spots. The Angels at 20. The Phillies at 21. The Cardinals are at 22. The Astros are at 23. The Cubs are at 24. The Royals are at 25. Giants, 26. Nats, 27. Red Sox, 28. Dodgers, 29. And the Braves, 30. So there's still some quirks in that, but I think it's a better system right now. We're taking advantage. There's more ways to suffer than just losing in October. Just ask Angels fans who have been given a god from the heavens, a baseball angel, as you may call him, and they can't even see the division series. They just are constantly seeing their team playing golf in October. So we need to take into account there's more than one way to suffer. Something for you to keep in mind when you're at Thanksgiving dinner. Man, there's more than one way to suffer. Well, I hope you don't suffer. And I hope you understand that I am listening. When I put out something like that and I have my ideas, it's a work in progress. If you have any other ideas of what I can do to make it the, the calculation of the suffering index more accurate, let me know. Shoot me something at, at Sully Baseball on Twitter. I respond back. But I decided to make that effort for you, and it's starting to look a little more accurate right now. We're adding factors, and that's how you win. And that's what you should do when you subscribe to this podcast. And by the way, thanks for making us your first listen, as we're available free in all your podcasts. With your second listen, why don't you make that the Locked on Bets podcast with your boy Q, with expert analysis from Lee Sterling. It's your one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Well, folks, I'm getting ready for Thanksgiving. This has been Locked On MLB for the 24th day of November 2021. Figuring out how to suffer. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.